Today we're going to talk about taking great photos for your portfolio. So I've gotten a few questions and actually some uh, pretty nice compliments about some of the photos that I take of my knives and, and some of my things. Uh, and I thought I'd just go over how I do it to uh, maybe help you out and give you some ideas on how you can take better ones, uh, especially for your thumbnails for your YouTube videos. So how do you get a good photo? Um, it's really not that difficult, but there are a couple little tricks that you're going to want to follow. So for the purposes of this video, uh, I've been doing some ulus recently, so I'm just going to take uh, one of these and we'll do up a photograph for one, as if I was doing it for my portfolio. First key is you want some kind of light box. Any photographer worth their salt will tell you that diffused light is the type of light you want. You don't want direct lighting, you want diffused lighting. So this um, little, it, this is actually a shower curtain that I use, diffuses the light from the lamps that I have. So rather than a big harsh glare coming in from the light with the diffuse light, it just, uh, you know, I don't know what it does, I don't know the technical terms, but it spreads it out. It makes it softer and you get a pic better picture from it. So I made my light box with about uh, five bucks worth of half inch PVC pipe and some connectors um, just to make a frame and then, you know, a, a dollar store shower curtain uh, that I cut in half. That, fit over both sides and it makes a great big light box I, I it's probably two feet wide um, so I mean I can fit uh, quite a large piece in there my original one was just made out of a large cardboard box and all I did was cut out the the sides of the box and put white tissue paper um, over the holes so on the sides and on the top was just white tissue paper um, and that was my first light box the other thing you're gonna want in your light box is something white that will bend. This is a piece of uh, white wall paneling from Menards, but uh, in my first light box made out of the cardboard, I used um, just some, some poster board, um, and that worked fine. You just want it to be able to curve gently. Uh, I believe they call it an infinity wall because uh, when you do a close-up on it, um, it looks like the white is stretching out to infinity. There's no harsh angles on it. Here's an example of the infinity. You can't tell where that ulu is sitting um, in relation to that curve. You know, as you back off, you can see it was sitting right there in the curve. But um, that that just gives you depth of field, so that when you take the picture, there's nothing that says here's where it ends. It goes on forever, basically. The background does. So this next part isn't um, an absolute, but it does help if you have a dark surrounding, um, especially if you have something highly reflective like a, a shiny knife, a mirror finish on a knife, because then you'll get less reflections from outside in the real world. So you want to shut off all the lights that aren't directly aimed at your box. So with all the ambient light off, the only lights shining in my light box are the two I have on the side. And I use 100 watt um, LED bulbs, just white light. Um, that seems to work the best for me. Your cameras may vary. You might want a little more. You might want a little less. You might want something coming down from the top. Um, for me, I just found the two on the side work perfectly fine. For my photos, all I use is my iPhone. Um, and before I had my iPhone, I was just using my Android. Um, they weren't great cameras. No, my Android had a lousy camera. My iPhone actually has a pretty good camera. Um, but they work fine um, for these portfolio pictures. So once I have the piece arranged in the direction I want, I'm going to go ahead and start my phone. And I'm just going to come in here and try to find an angle where the light's hitting it just right, where it's showing off and highlighting what I want. And then I'm going to snap a few different pictures from different angles. I'm also going to change the orientation of the blade. If you're doing Damascus, it's really important because you've got to get that light shining off it just right to to really get that Damascus pattern to pop. With something as simple as this, it's just kind of staying out of the way so that you don't get a reflection 
of yourself taking the uh, picture in the blade. Um, I mean, not that that's all bad, but it's just not exactly professional. Okay, so now with some pictures on the phone or on your camera, um, ready to go on the computer, uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut the lights off on the light box and we'll load everything up on the computer and go from there. All right, I'm going to assume that you know how to get your pictures from your phone or your camera onto your computer and I'm just going to go into uh, some of the the editing I do of the photos. I use Adobe Photoshop uh, but there are free programs out there if you don't want to pay for Adobe. Um, GIMP I think is the biggest but um, there are some freebies. So uh, here are all the pictures that I took of the Ulu and I'm just going to open them all up um, and normally I would I'll show you on one picture, maybe a couple here, uh, what I do. But normally I do this to all of them and then choose the one I like. So here we go. Here's the first one. First, I'm going to crop the image to get rid of, you know, all that excess background. I just want the image front and center. Now I'm going to go in and edit or adjust the image. You can do the auto levels and auto color and everything, but I use the individual brightness and contrast. Um, and I want to increase the contrast and when I increase the contrast I've got to increase the brightness now on a on a big computer it's not necessary but on a small phone something mobile you have to do this to make the pictures pop you need more contrast to really get them to show so that looks pretty good um, I'm just gonna shrink this one for now just kinda move it out of the way normally I just save it and go on to the next I'm gonna find a good one here um, I like that one. There's a little little thing in the corner there where a reflection got in, but otherwise I, I think that's a pretty good picture. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and crop it just like the first one. I um, want that image, you know, we want it highlighted. Sometimes you can use a little more background, sometimes a little less. Um, I like them pretty tight up on the image usually. So then uh, increase the contrast. And when you increase the contrast, you got to increase the brightness of the image. You don't want it too bright, but you need it bright enough so that you can see the details in there and things. So there we go. Um, let's work with this one. I'll, um, I think I'll just close these other photos um, and, and we'll just work with this one. So let me get rid of these. Normally, like I say, I do this to all of them and then pick the ones I like the best. But just for an example, we'll work with this one. So now I'm going to go up and save it. Um, I'm going to make a new folder, uh, save as, and I'm going to make a new folder. I always call it final, just like final edit of the pictures, all, all of them. Because it's already in the Ulu folder, I just call it final. Uh, save it as a JPEG. And I want the maximum quality. And now I'm going to close it, and then I'm going to reopen it, because when I do, it's going to open up in a larger screen. And it just makes it a little easier to work with. So here it is. Here's my saved photo um, with the, the contrast where I want it. Now, um, yeah, there's that, that little reflection there, but that's all right. So now I want to do something about, so you can see all these just the bright edges around the outside. Um, and I'm going to do something called a vignette. Um, where I add a layer. There's actually a few different ways to do this. This is just the easiest way I found. But add a layer and then fill it uh, with white or whatever color. It doesn't really matter the color. And I have a preset um, so I can put a vignette in, which just darkens the edges like that. But I'll show you how you get there if you, if you don't have a preset yet. You want the inner shadow and then you want the opacity at 100% so that it's not transparent at all and then um, the size you want as large as you can get and then the choke if you choke all the way see it just puts that box around it it just sort of darkens the edges a little more and what I'm going for is in the corners you can see how it just darkened up nice and dark in the corners and that's what I want so now we need to get rid of the white and for that you go to advanced blending on your blending options and take the fill opacity down to zero so now it's a hundred percent transparent that leaves the vignette the inner shadow um, but lets the original picture shine through and there we go um, real simple real easy 
and I think it just makes it look nicer. It draws the eye more towards your focal point, which is, you know, what you took a picture of. So now I'm going to go in there and save this. Uh, I'm just going to replace the one that's already there. And bada boom, bada bing. Uh, we got ourselves a brand new picture. All right, so that's how I do it. It's not the only way to do it, but um, it's quick, it's simple. It takes some pretty dang good pictures. Um, and then uh, the, the little bit of uh, editing I do in Photoshop just to highlight it. Uh, here's a, let me give you an example. Here's uh, a picture of the original. And then I'll throw up the, uh, the one that I did the, the, the high contrast on. And you can see it just brings out, you know, more of the picture, and especially on the small screens. If you're watching this video on your phone, uh, you probably notice a big difference. So hopefully that helped you out. And um, so hopefully that helped you out if you have... So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, if you want to sign up for Patreon for a buck a month, you'll get a little more insight. Um, the Patreon video on this one isn't, you know, a lot more detailed, but I do go into a little bit um, more detail on some of this stuff. But, uh, um, you know, that, that's Patreon, and uh, you can sign up for a buck a month if you want to see that. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks.